Hello, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're gonna be talking about COVID-19 and postpartum care implications after delivery for breastfeeding and on mental health. I'm Yalda Afshar. I'm one of the maternal fetal medicine physicians here at UCLA. I am accompanied by my colleague, Dr. Rashmi Rao, a colleague in maternal fetal medicine, as well as Jessica Sacker. She's a nurse, a nurse practitioner, and an international board certified lactation consultant that has been with us in the UCLA system for over two decades. So we're gonna be speaking today a lot about the fourth trimester. We hear a lot about the first three trimesters of pregnancy, but what we don't talk about is the fourth trimester as much. It's a really critical period for the mother and the baby, and we know that pregnancy itself is a window to the future health for the women that we take care of. Now, we're gonna be speaking about this specific to COVID-19 during this global pandemic. Um, so in the days, the weeks, the months that follow delivery, women are adapting to the changes in their hormones, the physical, physiologic changes, while, while they're continuing to learn to take care of their newborns and then to navigate new relationships at home, et cetera. So as you can see through the Venn diagram, there's many, many pieces that come together, they overlap. And the focus on today's talk is really gonna be infant care and feeding, as well as mood and emotional well-being. So here, our goals at UCLA are consistent with what we hope are your goals. At the end of the day, safe mother and safe baby. And then this webinar, we're trying to really empower you with the evidence and the resources for getting the care that is best for you and your baby, and then helping to make those decisions that work for your families. There's three action items. We really want you to start thinking about the support available to help with postpartum wellness, some that's gonna come from your end and your resources, and many, many that we have and we wanna to offer to you today. And then we really want to talk about staying in touch. We are here 24-7 um, for any questions. Your nurses, your midwives, your physicians, lactation consultants, we have made ourselves available through multiple means that we're going to get talk about later um, on during this talk. And then we want to encourage you really to talk about your feelings, your disappointments and fears, because you're not alone during this time. We are all in it together. So with that, I'm gonna ask Dr. Rao, who's taken the lead of the COVID program at UCLA in obstetrics, to talk us through about some of the changes um, for postpartum care. As Dr. Ashar mentioned, our goal is to really protect family-centered delivery care. And we're gonna plan on doing that with a combination of early discharge and close follow-up that we're planning on accomplishing by a team of obstetricians, pediatricians, and nursing, with a focus really on keeping the new families together. There are a lot of changes that are occurring, and I know that can be confusing. One of those things that a lot of people are hearing about is the visitor policy. There are new policies, so please call your physician or your hospital in advance so that you can prepare and be ready for what those changes might mean. In addition, our discharge policies may be changing a little as well. In accordance with the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, we believe that in order to limit the risk of inadvertent exposure and infection to you and your baby, it may be appropriate to expeditiously discharge the mother-baby unit when both you and your baby are safe and healthy and ready. To accomplish this, we have a great staff in place. So in the postpartum time period, we have highly trained nursing who will be your support person. In addition, they will be helping with your medical care, the care of the baby, as well as with breastfeeding, expressing, and pumping. And as Dr. Afshar mentioned, and as Jessica will explain soon, we have fantastic lactation specialists who will be not only helping inpatient, but also available as an outpatient basis. I'm just gonna review some postpartum care resources. So in addition to the lactation consultants that we have, we also have a website, uclahealth.org slash birthplace, where you can go and see a list of classes and webinars that we have available for our patients. These will review breastfeeding, sustaining breast milk, baby care, as well as a postpartum support group. In addition to this, we'll have obstetricians who will be checking in via telehealth within the first one to three weeks after you are discharged. 
And like I mentioned, there's a lactation telehealth visit as well. And this is a point where I'll pass it along to Jessica so she can explain more. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica. I am one of the lactation consultants and part of our team here at Santa Monica UCLA. I've been part of the team there for over 16 years. I primarily work in the NICU helping moms get breastfeeding established there, but I certainly am involved in postpartum. So if you are a mom who is facing this um, COVID crisis in your life as you've had your baby, we want you to be reassured that if breastfeeding is your choice for your baby, you can safely do so at the present time. And according to the World Health Organization and the CDC, there is no evidence that the COVID virus, it's transmitted through the mother's milk to her baby. That being said, we would want every mother to take precautions when she is handling her baby and or feeding her baby. So that would include good hand washing, um, wearing a protective mask um, if you are COVID positive, and go ahead and nurse your baby. If you feel that you need extra support for this, the lactation staff will help you as will your nurses. It is very important for the babies to receive that breast milk. So bringing the baby to the breast at early feeding cues, or as I always say to moms, um, babies have unrestricted access to the breast. And if you find that your baby is a little bit sleepy, then you can start manually expressing milk for your baby and providing that. But again, I think it's very important for moms to feel comfortable that if they want to provide their milk for their baby, they can safely do so um, at this time. And this is based on the best information we have available today at the present time. If your baby is rooming in with you, we want you to baby to room in with you in a safe way. So that would mean keeping the baby in their little, um, in their little cribs in your room, keeping the baby a little bit away from you at a six foot distance, just to prevent the possible transmission from respiratory droplets. And again, hand washing is essential for both handling your baby and when you are pumping or expressing your milk for your baby. So um, I'm, I hope that, that that piece of it is clear and, um, and then we can talk about um, tips on getting off to a good start with breastfeeding um, a little bit later in this presentation. So I'm gonna pass this off now to our doctors. So with that, thank you so much, Jessica. And at UCLA, we are a baby-friendly hospital. We support exclusive breastfeeding. However, first and foremost, um, a fed baby is a healthy baby. So some of the benefits if we choose to breastfeed are bonding for the baby. It's inexpensive, it's convenient. Breast milk is at a perfect temperature. It's easily digested. There's immunologic protection and allergy prophylaxis. We're gonna get into that a little bit more soon. And then there's some benefits for the mom as well, which include the bonding, which remains. It can delay the return of ovulation. It can slow down um, bleeding that happens postpartum. And then more long-term benefits are a reduction in breast and ovarian cancer, this is premenopausal, as well as an improvement in bone remineralization. So some of the immunologic contents of breast milk, which really aid in its uh, immune protection, are related to antibodies. These are the same as immunoglobulins, the proteins that the body produce, the immune system produces them to fight off foreign um, invasion. And it's important for the baby's defense system early on. There's post-resistant factors, anti-inflammatory components, cytokines like interleukin-6. And these are all just big boosts to the immunity of the baby. And that's some of the really important components. And how breast milk actually is let down and how that suckling reflex happens is related to the physiology of lactation. And it's a beautiful and intricate pathway. Really, it's focused on two hormones prolactin and oxytocin. They have friends and they're supported by estrogen and progesterone as well. But it's the suckling of the breast, similarly, which happens during a, just a breast pumping as well, which stimulates the nipple, um, sends a signal to the brain, which then releases um, oxytocin, the hormone, 
that allows for a letdown reflex and then milk ejection. So there's a positive feedback cycle that's happening. The suckling from the baby or the breast pump stimulates the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus tells the pituitary it needs to release prolactin, oxytocin needs to be released, and this continues to happen so that milk pools in the sinuses right under the areola, and that suckling stimulates milk to come in through the nipple. And milk in the first few days and in the first few weeks are really different. It's not the same component every day. Early on, it's colostrum. It's a very, very small amount. Our lactation consultants often refer to it as liquid gold. Um, it's very high in protein, immune globulins, and minerals. It transitions to a more high fat content. And then until about two weeks later where mature milk sits in. So Jessica, can you kind of walk us through some of the tips you have for mothers as they're starting this quest? Happy to. So early breastfeeding is really critical to establishing like a really good milk supply. It's also really helpful for the baby. So right after birth, babies initially are awake and they're interested in seeking and finding the breast. So depending upon the kind of delivery you have and how you're feeling, we really want moms to like let that baby breastfeed early and often in those first few hours after birth. Now there are some situations and there are some babies who are a little bit sleepy when they're first born and they're not so interested in eating. So if you find that you have a baby like this, then you can ask your nurse to help you with early and frequent removal of your breast milk with hand expression. And then that way your baby will get that early and so important uh, colostrum or that early milk that Dr. Afshar just mentioned. So keeping the baby in your room so that you're attuned to your baby's feeding cues, nursing often and or manually expressing, and then of course really getting a, a good deep latch for your baby so that the baby doesn't cause any kind of trauma um, to your nipples, and will, that will be very protective for you. But the babies also get more milk the deeper they're on the breast. So it's the win-win for both mom and baby. She's not in pain, the baby gets more milk, and nursing that baby often. Now, while you're in your room when you're feeding, we do want you to take precautions, again, to help prevent any kind of transmission from yourself to the baby uh, in the event that you are COVID positive. So good hand washing is really important, keeping a distance between you and a baby, possibly wearing a protective mask so that you're not breathing on the baby in case uh, the, ba the virus is transmitted by droplet infection or just in the air. So we want you and your baby to be as protected as possible while you're in the hospital with us. Uh, in addition, when you go home and you're expressing milk, there are safe ways to keep your milk and also in the hospital if you're pumping milk for your baby. So we would again want you to pump often, eight or more times in 24 hours, because that really tells our bodies to make the milk for our babies. If you have enough milk to store, then you can keep it in the refrigerator in the room and then that milk can be served to the baby um, when the baby's ready to feed. Um, of course, we would warm the milk but you can definitely be feeding that milk back to the baby. If when you go home you, and you have an abundance of milk and you're able to freeze milk, then you can, you can freeze milk. And then there, of course, there are rules that cover all of these uh, factors for pumping milk. So breast milk that is freshly pumped can be left out at room temperature for up to four hours in your refrigerator for four days. And if you're fortunate enough to have milk to freeze, that milk can be in your freezer for six months and up to 12 months, if that's an option for you. When you defrost frozen milk, I always tell moms to frost in small amounts that you think you're gonna need for that feeding because you must use that milk within 24 hours. Breast milk is very easily defrosted by putting in warm water and then you might wanna like warm it again just so that the baby does receive warm milk because it comes out of us warm and then using that milk up within a 24 hour time period and not reserving it. So those would be my tips and just um, keeping your baby close to you so that you're aware of the baby's cues so you can get to them quickly and feed them and then keep your distance from your baby, which is very hard to do in this time. Those would be my tips for you know early and often feeding and um, listening to your baby's cues and just offering the breast when available. 
Now, in the event that you have milk and you're and you are not able to feed the baby, having a person in your room that is healthy and can offer that milk to the baby would be an ideal situation for you and would be um, facilitated for you in the hospital. Thank you so much, Jessica. As Jessica mentioned, this is a different time. You know, we recognize that this is a different time. Um, Having a baby in the time of COVID-19 can definitely be difficult. Um, In general, perinatal mental health disorders are known to affect approximately 15% of women in the United States. And traumatic events can actually increase the occurrence of mental health disturbances, um, especially in the time right before and after delivery. We understand that this is during the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of people and women are feeling a loss of control. We're hearing a lot of conflicting information and information that we frankly are just beginning to figure out. Um, And we are asking that people are physically isolated and isolation can trigger anxiety and depression. And we are aware that this is not how many women thought that they were going to be delivering their baby. Um, But we wanna ensure that you know that we are here to support women during this difficult time. Please reach out if you need help. We are here to support you. Um, And these are the different ways that you can do that. You can reach out to your physician, your nurse, or even a mental health provider through your My UCLA Health chart. There are also other programs and services here at UCLA that we'd like you to be aware of. There is the Maternal Outpatient Mental Health Service Program. That's a bridge. Um, There's also a UCLA Women's Life Center, and there's a UCLA Perinatal Mental Health Program. All of the links are listed on this webinar. In addition, there are um, websites that are available that you can access from your home, such as a Postpartum Support International. Um, There's a lot of women who are on that website who can blog and who can support you through this difficult time. With that, I'd like to pass it over to Dr. Asher so she can tell you a little bit about what we're doing to learn more about COVID-19 and pregnancy. Yeah, so we're all in a lot of unknowns here and we are all in this together like Dr. Rao and Jessica went through before. And we need more data. We need more data that's specific to you. We need more data specific to pregnant women and recently postpartum women. So this was a call to arms to us at UCLA and our colleagues at UCSF. We started a national registry, a study, it's called Priority. And we're asking women to self-refer or your provider can refer you to the study. And we're just trying to learn about the experience of women who are being tested for COVID, who either end up being COVID negative or positive. So we need data relevant to pregnant women to help counsel women appropriately, women for their risk to themselves, their pregnancy and their babies. And if you'd be interested, we would be absolutely humbled and thrilled if you joined us. There's a link on the UCLA ob website as well. Um, you can go directly to the study website at priority.ucsf.edu. You can follow us on Twitter or however you like. So again, with that, I wanna thank my colleagues and my friends um, for this webinar and you for trusting us in your health. So please, please continue to reach out to us in any form at all times and let us know what we can do for you. Thank you all for your time. We're here for you and we appreciate you working with us.